Hello, my name is Jonathan Bisnett, and this is the second video in a series on BJT transistor logic gates. And in this video, I'm going to focus on the AND gate. So we're going to actually zoom in here into this back corner of the board here. And you'll see what I have here is, an, is a uh, logic AND using uh, BJT transistors. In this case, there's actually three transistors that make up this circuit. And uh, I'll turn it here a little bit so that you can get a better glimpse of the actual uh, circuit we're focusing on. In this case, right here. And you'll see that the LED in this at this point is on. Uh, the way this circuit works is there are uh, two transistors in it, of which the transistors are wired in a, um, a serial fashion. So basically the collector of one feeds the emitter of the next. And in order to get logic to travel, or in order to get current to travel all the way through, both transistors have to be in the on state, meaning their base has to be in this case negative, uh, sorry, um, positive because they are NPN transistors. So these two transistors right here are the two we're talking about. Uh, and what you'll see is the one on the right, you'll see that we have a connection to the emitter from ground. We then have uh, this black wire that connects, uh, the black wire that connects from the collector of this one to the emitter of the second one and then ultimately a wire that comes out of the collector of the second one and into a third transistor, which I'll explain in a minute. You'll also see that there are four resistors here. Uh, on the front side here, there are two 10K ohm resistors that connect the base of each of these transistors to ground. And, and the intent here is to keep the transistor in an off state unless it receives a positive signal to the base. So if there's no signal being provided uh, to the base, if they're either in a floating state or grounded, then the, the potential seen at the base of the transistor is ground and the transistor will be shut off, non-conducting in this case. Behind it, you'll see there are two 220 ohm resistors that are basically the inputs to the base and from those, there's a couple of yellow wires. In this case, uh, one of those wires uh, is, sorry, one of those wires is going to the, po actually they're both going to the positive rail, and that's why, believe it or not, that's why the LED is on. We have an AND condition. So both are receiving positive values. The last transistor in this piece here, you'll notice uh, our black wire that connects the collector of the second transistor to the, in this case, input of the third transistor. And what it does is has a 220 ohm resistor that connects to the base of this transistor. And this transistor also has a 10K ohm resistor that connects to the positive rail. In this particular case, this transistor is, it actually is a PNP transistor, a 2N3906. And you'll notice that the emitter is connected to the positive rail. And in this case, the, connect, the collector is connected to our LED. And then from there, through a resistor to ground. This last, uh, this third transistor is really meant, in my case, I would call it an interface transistor uh, or a staging resistor, a transistor, whatever you want to call it. Its job is to take the negative logic that will, in essence, come out of the two uh, NPN transistors and convert it to a positive signal so that this particular circuit when it's on will output a positive signal rather than ground which would be what would happen if we only used the two NPN transistors that perform the the central logic of this circuit. So these two if they're both on conduct uh, basically conduct and provide ground to this PNP transistor which at that point turns this transistor on and provides the positive current to light the LED. If we remove or basically take one of these 
connectors and move it to the ground side, you'll notice that our LED goes out. If I put it back, the LED comes back on. Same thing with the other one. They both have to be on in order for this to work. If I put it back, it comes back on. Uh, if I take them both out, you'll notice it stays off. So the only condition under which the only condition under which it's lit is in the event that both of these are plugged into the positive rail and we are in essence getting uh, uh, a one signal or a positive voltage on both of the input transistors. So if I go on and look at the schematic here, basically what you'll see, you'll see the 5 volt source which goes up and is and runs through both of the inputs uh, J2 and J3 which then run through the 220 ohm resistors into the base of the two transistors Q2 and Q3. You'll also see the two 10k ohm resistors that connect to ground on both of those that are also going to the base and provide the potential, the ground potential, in the event that the switches are open. Uh, next, you'll notice that transistor Q3, the emitter is connected to ground, the collector is connected to the emitter of Q2, and from there the collector of Q2 goes through transistor R2, another 220 ohm resistor, and into the base of Q1, which is our PNP transistor, our staging transistor. Uh, the other thing you'll notice here is there's again a 10k ohm resistor between the base of that transistor and the positive rail. Being a PNP transistor, to keep it shut off, I want it to see positive potential until ground, a ground signal is applied to the base. And then finally, uh, the emitter of that's connected to the positive rail. The collector goes through the LED and back through a 220 ohm resistor to ground. So when I, when both switches are closed, at that point, both transistors see a positive potential at their base and turn on, go into active mode, in which case uh, the ground potential coming into Q3 is sent all the way through both transistors and applied to the base of Q1. Being a PNP transistor, when this gets ground at the base, it goes into active mode and basically 5 volt, the, the value, the positive 5 volts from the source travels through Q1, through the LED, through the 220 ohm R3 resistor and back to ground. That's what activates this circuit. So if either J2 or J3 is not closed, then the, the associated transistor is not operating and Q1 will be in an off state and nothing will go on. So both, both switches have to be closed for this to work. If you look at the bottom, you'll see the, uh, the logic, uh, the truth table, uh, and the only condition in which an output is 1 is in the condition that both A and B are 1. So that's an AND gate. Thank you, and hopefully you'll watch the rest of these and see the other gates we have uh, that I've put together. Thanks.